as athletes, I think we always look back to the highs in our careers and we try to replicate it and that never works. And honestly, that's almost like more harmful. Sometimes you have to continue to evolve your approach to running. I came back after this like hiatus um, with just like gratitude, like every day feeling this gratitude for doing what I do. And even the hard days, like just being grateful for what, what it's doing and shaping for me in my life. What's up everybody. Welcome back to the Beer Mile podcast. We have some really good stuff for you today. Gosh, this episode is going to be hype between Natasha Rogers coming on the roast of Adam. It's the day. The it day is of the reckoning. day. We are going to be airing here in just a couple of minutes during the intro, all of the roasts that we received for Adam. And so that's coming very soon as well. And then at the end of the episode, we've got the beer of the week and the beer of the week this week, this is unique. Uh, I already had to open it because it's, you know. Cali cream and mine's unopened, you know. I follow the rules here. Adam follows the rules. I had to take that first sip because I couldn't wait. But our guy, Colin Goss, thanks so much from California. Got a little personal even, note. Uh, even a personal note, this guy is too nice. Thank you so much, Colin. Uh, so he wants us to not only rate the taste of this beer, but also would this beer be good for the beer mile? So this is the Cali Cream and Vanilla Cream Ale. And so at the end of the episode, we are gonna break that down. Would this be the ultimate beer mile beer? You know, assuming it was in a bottle, because I think we've kind of determined at this point, bottles are a little quicker than cans, but would this be the beer of choice? Would, will this overtake Blue Moon? That would be pretty crazy. Ooh, uh, stick uh, around for that to find out. But in the intro here, let's start off by introducing our guest today, Natasha Rogers. If you haven't heard of her, well, I, then you're not a true running fan, first of all. First of all, follow her on YouTube. She has a great channel. She posts uh, typically once a month, maybe more, if you can convince her to. That's right. I think if she starts getting some people, uh, more people tuning in, she will start posting more often. But I, I compare her. She's the female version of Morgan McDonald. She for incorporates sure. memes, really, really funny editing. Uh, you just have to see it for yourself. It's very hard to... Yeah. to describe but I, I think a lot of uh like youtube running personalities like to say that hey like this is me being brutally honest but like natasha does not give a shit about like putting some sort of veil over what she's actually experiencing yep. like she will post a video of her crying based on her like because of her injury like everything is super raw so if you want to follow that like explicit side of professional running give her channel a subscription. Yeah, super relatable. So Natasha Rogers, our guest today, in 2012, uh, as she was finishing up her collegiate career, she won an NCAA title D1. She also was second place at the Olympic trials in 2012 in the 10K, which would normally qualify you to be on the Olympic team, but she didn't have the Olympic standard. And so unfortunately didn't get to go, but you know, in our eyes, and we talk about this during the interview, you know, she's an Olympian. Uh, she was the second fastest in the U.S. that year. And then she ended up having some injury, um, especially main injury was with her knee where she had to get a uh, procedure done and struggled for quite a long time to overcome that. She actually shifted from professional running to working a career, a, a full-time job, and then was able to eventually get to the point where, and it, you know, it even took a little sabbatical in Thailand to kind of come back to to full you know mental physical strength new perspective on life and then take up round number two as a professional runner with brooks and won the cross country national title in 2019 and here she is going for that uh going for that olympic team in 2021 for reals this time because she has the standard going into the race so if she's top three in the 10k at the olympic trials then she's in so it was a great it was a great conversation i thought across the board yeah definitely super excited to watch her at the trials um definitely rooting for her gonna be really fun to watch i mean we kind of talked about it we already manifested that she's gonna make the team in this i mean that, oh, not, yeah. and that's not to put pressure on her but like we both said you know she's she's done it before she's been top three in the u.s before in olympic trials so she just has to do it again. And she's definitely right where she needs to be at this she's, point in the yeah, training I think cycle. She, she's in a good place physically and mentally. So she's, I think, yeah, uh, she's much stronger in both aspects. That's a good combo for her. All right. So Natasha coming up here in just a couple of minutes, beer of the week at the end of the episode. But now the other big moment of the intro here. So hey, thank you. 
for the roast. Get your what, what your is popcorn? It? Uh, yeah, get your popcorn aside. Get your beer ready to go here because we're gonna. What we're gonna do is we're just gonna play through all the roasts in a row. We got them all laid out. It's about two ish minutes straight of roasts. If you're on if you're on YouTube, you'll see our reactions. We'll play it live for you. Yeah, would um, recommend definitely would recommend YouTube on this one to see our reactions. But either way, audio is good too. Uh, thank you to everyone who sent those in. Um, they're all going to be anonymous. Uh, we're not going to reveal the names of of who put them out there. We do have so when you're listening to these roasts, the last like four, I believe were people that just sent in written roasts. And so what we did was we took in one of the AI like voice uh, deep fakes, right, essentially, right, but right. Not, not great quality deep fakes, but we took some deep fakes. And so we took the written ones and just loaded them in. So we got Trump, George W. Oh, uh, Danny DeVito. Danny DeVito is one of them. And Gilbert Godfrey. Gilbert Godfrey. <laughs> so, so that's why you'll hear the last four at the end are going to be uh, celebrity voices that we used in the AI machine uh, because they were written in. So, man, do we just do we just dive right into let's these bad boys? Any other preface? Fuck it, let's do it live. No. We'll do it live. Fuck it. Do it live. I can. I'll write it and we'll do it live. Here we go. Roasting Adam. Our first ever roast on the Beer Mile podcast, and this is definitely going to probably stick around because this is freaking hilarious. All right, here we go. Let's do it. Man, Adam is so ugly, I wouldn't even use his face as my toilet. Get that thing off of my timeline, man. Your face looks like it caught on fire, and then someone tried to put it out with a hammer. Adam looks like the kind of guy that shoots a basketball underhand. Uh, I, was, I was looking around a little bit, saw the Colleen Quigley episode, and watching you braid her hair, frothing at the mouth like a fucking chimp was really entertaining. And you talking to girls in general on the podcast is uh, is pretty funny. His left ear is easily twice as big as his right ear. I thought that was worth noting. <laughs> this man can't even handle four pints of ice cream, and he's acting like he has a chance against Joe Hansen. Fuck Claire out Johnson. of here. What's living on the side of your neck, and is that where you get your speed? <laughs> at least, at least. For as nice Adam looks like he belongs on a TV show with the Adams family. <laughs> hey, look! This message took me about fifteen seconds, that just about as good. long as Adam's beard chug. <laughs> Valid. I think I got you figured out, buddy. You are nothing more than a habitual coattail clinger. <laughs> you are the social media remora fish to all the sharks that you are surrounded by. <laughs> You share the podcast with a world record, world champion at the beer mile. You're just waiting for that uh, chum, the scraps to come out of the gills of the uh, athletes and talent you surround yourself with. Even trying to steal the clout now with Sinclair Johnson and Bowerman, Bowerman Babe with the shenanigan bet, whatever you got going on, whatever relevance you can gain. Even your own dog has more social media clout than you. Shout out to uh, nice. Yeah, keep it up. Keep doing what you're doing. Uh, just keep wearing those cutoff denim overalls. I think that's the best thing you got. You got a shot out uh, at the track, so keep it up. I hope Adam brings his toilet paper to Portland because Sinclair is going to shit on him. Adam wants to be Josh Kerr so badly, but really he's just another David Ribby. Chris really knows how to work Adam like a puppet with his meat stick. I heard from a friend that Adam likes to jerk off to his dead grandmother. Even I wouldn't grab my grandma by the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. I couldn't there even tell is. you my favorite. I, I think I was the, just gonna ask. So what's the what's the favorite there? Oh man, the I think the longer like that's probably the best roast where the longer one. Um, where he's just calling me out on everything, riding on the coattails of people that are and more all, successful. all the ocean references too. Yeah. Like the bottom feeder, the sharks, the oh man! See, I kind of am a bottom feeder <laughs> when you when you think about it. I mean, we both are. Let's be a, honest. A power bottom feeder. <laughs> man, I'm trying. I don't even know. Like they're they're all they so funny good. in their own way. Oh man, my cheeks hurt. That was that's funny. The the at the beginning the um. Like the, the your ears, well, towards the beginning, your ears are different sizes, Dude, and just like, but then like the pause perfect. and the, I just thought that was worth noting. It's, like it, it's oh, it's the so delivery, funny. the Dude, delivery kinda, was a plus. It's kind of like walking on the other side of the street 
when middle schoolers are approaching you. Like, I don't fuck with that. I'm like going across the street because they will say some shit like that to you. Like if you were ever at True. camp counselor, people would be like, Hey, why is your ear two times bigger as the other ear? And you're like, Whoa, I never noticed that. And then you go home and then look you're yourself conscious. And then you look yourself in the mirror yeah. like, Oh fuck. <laughs> yeah. Like why is there that big thing on the side of your neck? Like, like Oh geez, I didn't even realize that oh, was such a big deal. Like, God, nice. I guess I got to worry about that now. That's so funny. Oh, all right, what's up everybody? We have a late submission, a video submission, nonetheless, from friend of the pod, Dave Malley, sister podcast on the Sidious Network, um, roasting me. It's it's about 90 seconds long. Chris says that it's pretty good. So uh, let's crack a beer and, and see what Dave's got. Hopefully I don't cry on camera. Let's get it rolling. Hello, Beer Mile Podcast. It's me, David Melly from Run Your Mouth. It's such an honor to be here speaking to your tens of listeners about the great Adam Sherson. Most of the running world knows Adam as that random guy riding Chris's coattails, but what they don't know is just how hard he works to put out the mediocre content you all know and love. These guys have spent thousands of dollars bringing you stupid videos that somehow still are lower quality than whatever shit comes out of Ben Crawford's dorm room. <laughs> And they've crisscrossed the country in flagrant violation of COVID guidance to bring you interviews with some of the sport's most easily tricked athletes. Adam takes time out of his busy schedule of getting his hair cut every two days to bring you a weekly podcast whose success is based primarily on the purchase of a domain name. He brings important representation to the podcast world. There truly aren't enough 20-something white finance bros with podcasts already. He also defies expectations. For someone who hosts a podcast about beer, he sure has surprisingly shitty taste in booze. Wild. Anyways, I have to go contribute something meaningful to the sport, but I just wanted to say congrats, Adam, on all your accomplishments and on your engagement. I was floored to learn that you're marrying a woman, but I'm happy for you nonetheless. I can't wait to see what you do next, especially if what you do next is lose to Bowerman's fourth fastest female miler in a 400 meter race. Cheers. That's amazing. That's a really good one. I'm glad he did it like very much uh, like like Comedy Central style roast. That was on the money. Man, shout out Dave Malley. Great content. Hope everyone enjoyed. That was amazing, y'all. Thank you for sending stuff in. Well, obviously we're doing this for Chris in the future. I mean, if should we, we just solicit those now? We might oh, as well. Yeah, if, and if we get more for me, we will like collect yeah. them and put them in future episodes because they're funny as shit. Yeah, so still feel free, send in more for Adam. And then now, I think now it's my turn. We can officially say it. Send in roast for Chris as well. And we'll we'll do let's, a little reel let's of get it Chris roast as well. But yeah, keep, keep them coming. Great uh, work. If you're watching on YouTube, link on the screen. If, uh, it's also in the description in the audio version on our anchor page you can send in that voice message or you can just dm dm one of us i guess now ideally dm adam true uh on instagram because then i won't see it if you're if you're roasting me and if you want to roast adam just be a you know boobity bop clickety clack on the phone instead of uh, your voice then you know send it to me awesome. or adam yeah that's I, think how that's, that I think that's how that works right uh so but what we did say we said if you roast adam we're going to give away swag to those that roast Adam. And so we need to do that. We, what we said on the last episode was if you send in a roast for Adam, the first five people to send in those roasts are gonna get the swag giveaway. Um, and, and also one of those folks was also a repeater because we also have been saying if you put in a five-star review on Apple Podcasts, that enters you in the giveaway as well. And we had someone uh, do that. And so they're double entered. They also send in a roast, so it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, that, I mean, that's like, you're like a hundred times entered if you do a five-star review and you send in a roast. Like that's like, honestly, that's a hundred percent chance that you're gonna probably, get swag. Probably. So <laughs> here we go. The five winners of free swag for the Adam Roast, for the five-star Apple reviews, for all the good things. We got to give it to the one that let off, the face toilet guy. It was anonymous, uh, sent in on Anchor anonymously. So if you're the face toilet guy, hit us up, let yeah, us know. Yeah, we'll have to do some sort of verification, but you, you hit know, us up. Yeah. Yeah, uh, that's a good point. How do we even verify that? Just be honest, yo, you know, honor system. Uh, my boy, Brian Alia, <laughs> thank you so much for the the deep references to the ocean. I mean, that was uh, that's good. That stuff. was great. And and you got it in on time. So not, not one of my faves and you got it in 
just in the nick of time for that top five. And then we got Lex K as well. And also the title of this one. So Master of Goop. So this was the one where we're talking about my face being uh, hammered in, I think. Yep. But Master of Goop, that's fucking amazing. Great title. Uh, Adam, who's our other two? Oh, so usually Chris is the announcer. We've Let's see got, if he butchers this name. Sorry, got, Luke, if he does. Oh, I just gave it away. Luke, we've got Luke w- Wajenka. I'd say that, Wajenka. That's fair, right? Yeah, Luke Wajenka. And then we've got Marky Mark. That, our that boy Marky easy. Mark. What's good, Marky Mark? Crispy Nugs. Crispy Nugs. That's a good one. All right. So the five of you. Head on over to Instagram, Beer Mile Media. I mean, I think I think you guys know our Instagram account, hopefully, at this point. Uh, DM us. Let us know what you want from the BeerMile.com swag store. Your address, your size, your social security number. We'll get that sent your way. Ideally, your credit card with the CVV. That's all we need to get this thing popping. And I think that's pretty much it, yo. If we uh, send in those swag giveaways on the next episodes, we've got ways to do that. To be entered in, roast Chris, roast Adam again if you want, five-star review on Apple Podcasts, share the Beer Mile Podcast on your Insta story. I think that's that'll pretty much do it. If you do any of those things, you're in. And we will see y'all at the Drake Relays and or the Kansas City Qualifier. Yeah, it's I would give it an and also. And also, yeah, if you guys want to meet up for a run, meet up for a podcast, meet up for a beer, meet up for uh I don't know. What else? So, quack, quack. I mean, uh, meet up for a Bible study session. Yeah, yeah. Whatever, whatever it is, you know, whatever floats your boat, we'll be there. And with that, and with that, <laughs> and with that, I mean, we got that. We got the things. And with that, let's get into this podcast. So yeah, I was Natasha Rogers. Now I'm on the spot. You heard it here first. It's Natasha Rogers. <laughs> Welcome to the show, Natasha Rogers, about to be second time Olympian in the mind of the Beer Mile Boys. Tasha, welcome to the show. Uh, so we're drinking Coors today. Is that yeah. your favorite beer or is that just what's available? This is my roommate's beer because I ran out of beer. And my roommate doesn't really live here, so he won't mind. Those are the best. I'll replace it. <laughs> but Coors is a Colorado beer, so cheers. That's right. <laughs> Colorado, you've said before that's your favorite state, favorite place to be. Well, I'm from here. Um so it's just like home and my family lives here, but I don't know if it's like always my favorite state. Like sometimes I'm like, why am I dealing with the snow? And like, I, I really want to be by the ocean. Um, but there's good vibes in Colorado, especially Denver. I like the people in Denver. <laughs> yeah. What are, what are some of your other favorites? That's the one benefit or of many benefits of being a pro runner is you get to travel a lot of places and see a lot of cities. So what are some others that are up there for you in terms of uh, favorite places to visit or potentially live? Yeah. Um, definitely California. Um, I just love, I've always loved the idea of California. It's like all American, like, the American dream basically. And it really lives that up for me. Like you're, you're right on the Pacific and the vibes are good. The weather's warm. I love New York city. Um, I definitely, I've always wanted to live there, but I don't want to like live in a little box. So I need to like marry rich and then convince <laughs> him to move to New York city with me. Um, what else? Ooh, I, I really have fallen in love with Washington, uh, recently and Brooks is headquartered out of Seattle. So, um, I hope to make some more trips up that way too. I have a lot of favorite States. Um, I could keep going. Yeah. So do you enjoy that aspect of getting to be in different places? Do you enjoy the traveling and kind of, yeah, test out different places in different cities? That is one of my favorite things about my job. Um, and, when I retire from pro running, I'm going to need a job where I'm constantly traveling. So I was, I've been thinking about like NCAA coaching or something, um, where you are just breaking up the routine. And, um, I love like just 
going to other cities and diving into the history and the culture. I like to go out to eat by myself. That's like one of my favorite things to do. And people think I'm weird for that, but whatever. I'm weird. <laughs> yeah, I would, I would do that a lot when I was traveling for work and people were like most of the folks I was traveling with were like, oh, like, let's go out to a bar or like we'll all get dinner together. And I kind of liked to like hop around to different restaurants just to like, I don't know, soak in the atmosphere. It, it is weird. Like, why is that such a weird like uh, uh, for because similar here, yeah. I when I was we, we both were consultants for a while and we would travel for work. And yeah, I'd go out to a restaurant and be sitting alone. And like the waiter or waitress would always say like, oh, like who's joining you? And it's like, nobody. <laughs> I'm just just having dinner myself. Yeah. That's fine. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Like, it's, it's a thing. It's Like, leave me alone. Yeah. But it is different for a guy and a girl. Like. <laughs> Yeah, I think so. Because it's way more acceptable for a dude to go do something by himself. But when a girl is doing it, people are like, oh, are you okay? Like, and it's like, What's yes, I'm fine. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. So, so you did have a full-time normal, I guess, normal person job that was, wasn't running for a while. Uh, curious to, to hear about that a little bit. You were very successful as a runner and then you had some injury issues and ventured into the full-time just working world and then came back to pro running so how did it compare like that that grind of corporate life which is completely different I'm assuming than the grind of being a professional runner yeah thank you for asking that because people don't really ask me that and it's something that I think is really important to talk about for like people who want to pursue this as a profession because it's a short lived career. You will retire. You are replaceable and injuries happen a lot. Um, and I've definitely had an up and down career. Um, I am injury prone. Um, but basically when I lost sponsorship, it was, um, due to a, pretty big injury and, um, a procedure that didn't go well. And I definitely had to reevaluate my entire life. I lost everything that I had worked for and, um, it was like, I needed to make money. Um, and it was really hard to be taken seriously by the corporate world or any job. Really. They, all I had on my resume was I can run fast in circles and yeah. <laughs> now I can't because I'm injured. Um, and so luckily I got a job at a tech company, a startup tech company. Um, and the, my boss was a former college basketball player. So he was like, Oh, you're an athlete. All right. You're going to be so good at sales. And he was so hyped on me. He thought I was going to be like the best saleswoman ever. I am terrible at sales. <laughs> so I only did this job for four months, but oof, it was a brutal job um, making cold calls and trying to sell people artificial intelligence. I still really can't tell you what that is um, to this day, <laughs> but I, I made a few sales and then four months into the job, Ray my agent called me. Um, he's never really let me given up fully. And he's like, all right, let's get you a sponsorship again. And I was like, please, I'm ready. Let's do it. Sure. I can't be At chained to this desk. Yeah. At that point, were you like, how ready to go back both from like mentally and physically? Were you ready to jump back into the running world? Um, physically, I still wasn't ready. Uh, it took me and you can see this on some of like the race footage in my first few. Oh, sorry. There you go. Sorry, People are blowing me up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but in some of the race footage, like cross country nationals, when I won that race, I had a really bad limp. Um, I was still dealing with a lot of pain. Um, and it took a long time to break down that scar tissue. So physically, I wasn't ready, but I kind of just, I knew that I would have to kind of grind it out for a while. Um, and then mentally, 
I definitely had unfinished business. Like every day at work at my corporate job, I would write down that I was going to become an Olympian um, and just really tried to uh, give life back to that dream um, because, yeah, I've been I've been at this a long time and yeah. I want it to happen. I really want to go to Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. D- d- do you get nervous or worry about, I, I mean, I'm sure there is some level of anxiety and worry about it, but like thinking ahead to after running, going back to the corporate life, like, do you think that you could find like a career or a job there that does make you as satisfied as running? Or do you think that running is oh, like always going to be top notch, like way above anything else that you could do? Don't ask me that question. <laughs> <laughs> try not to try not to think about it. <laughs> I think I, yeah. I really try to avoid. But no, I. That is a really great question, actually, and I do think about it all the time. I, I want to find that passion. I have found that passion in writing, um, and I I want a career in writing. My degree was in writing. Um, like communications and journalism, but I want to like write a book. And so I think whatever job I do is not going to be a traditional job. I, I really learned that, um, I'm going to have to have like just one of those odd jobs that like kind of works. Um, and then yeah, marry rich. So that's my plan. (laughs) (laughs) I don't even think I could get married, honestly. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, honestly, the world is going moving more and more towards kind of the odd jobs or like freelancing yeah. and all of that. So I don't think that's even that that's not even like a rarity anymore. I think that's totally you you could that's just dream. have that for that's the rest the of dream. your <laughs> that is the dream to, yeah. to get out of that uh, get out of that like stuck in an office or I guess now really working remotely stuck in your apartment for for most people. But uh, but like that's that. Sh- that T- total structure to your day that you can like never break out of. And, um, so yeah, I mean, writing, especially, especially when you make the Olympics this year, that's going to be that book about your story is going to, is going to be huge. So I think you, Thank I think you, you should, I think you you said go win. yeah. Oh yeah. Of course I said, when we're I all mean, about <laughs> manifestation here, I mean, you, you already made an Olympic team once you just didn't get to, you know, go. go to the Olympics because of the the time standard, you know, BS that that is the uh, Olympic standards. But you already made one Olympic team, so I, I don't think it's uh, it's absolutely not unrealistic to say that you're going to make another Olympic team. <laughs> Thank you, I I appreciate that. I need to hear that from everybody every single day because so it. You mentioned anxiety earlier, and man, is it real? Um, it's it's going to keep getting more and more intense, um, going into the end of June. And, um, that's part of the whole thing though. It's like the true champions are the ones who can keep a level head through all this because like, especially on an Olympic year, um, the stakes are high. Usually it's like the end of your contract and like everyone's watching you and, um, but yeah, it's, it's not about everyone else. It's like your journey. So it's, it's been really cool to be on this, this ride, but it's been brutal <laughs> too. In terms of uh, just like mindset towards the sport and I guess life in general, you, you took a vacation in between um, like working a corporate job and coming back to being a pro runner did, did anything change about how you approach the sport mentally? Um, absolutely. Yes. Uh, that's a ever evolving thing. Um, we always, as athletes, I think we always look back to the highs in our careers and we try to replicate it and that never works. And honestly, that's almost like more harmful. Sometimes you have to continue to evolve your approach to running. And, um, I came back after this like hiatus, um, with just like gratitude, like every day, if I am not, it's like feeling this gratitude for doing what I do. And even the hard days, like just being grateful for what, 
what it's doing and shaping for me in my life. Um, and then, um, just more kindness. Like Mm -hmm. I, I, I'm really trying to give myself like self love and be in tune with my body instead of being harsh on myself and, um, you know, never being satisfied. So yeah, definitely some changes have been made. Yeah, that's, and I think it is really the, the less you, to, to the extent that you can not str- over stress about it and kind of let, let running come to you and, and uh, just kind of go with the flow for lack of a better term. I think that is typically how people have a little bit more success too, because you, you kind of have breakout races when you least expect it a lot of times. And so just, mm-hmm. uh, yeah, just continuing on the process and, uh, keep showing up. Uh, I think Des, Des Linden says that a lot, but I think it's super true. Just keep showing up and and not giving up and not yeah. placing too it's much like pressure. It's that simple, right? It yeah, it is. It is. And not place too much pressure on any one race or anything. Just keep, uh, yeah, keep giving your best every time that you come to the line and eventually it's going to happen. And you've, you've had it happen before when you, in the end of your college career. And, and I mean, even recently too, when your comeback with the uh, cross country title and, and, very recently, uh, having a great half marathon race too, uh, which was pretty, it's pretty cool seeing the footage from that, but boo, boo on the half marathon. Okay. Boo. Well, I, that, I, I, that was like so painful. I also was like breaking my bone during, so. Right. Um, right. It, it also <laughs> was. To think about. <laughs> fair enough. Fair enough. It, it, like watching some of the race footage from that, it was like just such weird, like weather and just such a weird race. Like you're out there alone and it's like you and Molly and then you guys are kind of, kind of apart. So it's just like, you're basically just time trialing. And so it's, I wouldn't even consider that a real race. So from my perspective, from the spectators uh, view, running the time that you did under the, you know, scenario, I thought was pretty, pretty impressive. Well, and, and now in hindsight, like knowing that you had stress reactions and that to too, shins, that yeah. makes the race, like the performance even better, I think. Exactly. Thank you. I appreciate hearing that. It, it was a good, it was so cool to finish on that racetrack. Um, and just, I kind of like going to those dark places, like, you know, like with running and especially the longer the distance, you will go to dark places in your brain. But I kind of like it because you really learn a lot about yourself and um, like just pushing your limitations and um, like, yeah, it's, it's cool, but yeah, I don't wait. What were we talking about before that? Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, we were, we were on, wait, what were we on? God, you're asking the oh, wrong. God. Yeah. <laughs> we, we're, we are too ADHD to remember. I uh, remember <laughs> those specifics. We were, we, were on the, we were on the Thailand trip and then we were on the, uh, the comeback to racing. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I, I guess the end. Yeah, the end, the end. That's where we were at. Um, so, so how, uh, after that half marathon effort where you are basically, yeah, running injured, uh, how has the comeback now been after coming off of the, the injuries that you were dealing with? Yeah. Um, it's been hard, but it's going well, I think. Um, I mean, it is, it's, See, I got to change the way I'm talking because I the the last four weeks, I felt pretty hopeless and defeated. Um, I mean, I was really trying to stay mentally strong. But when you're injured and it's an Olympic year and it's the beginning of track season, um, you kind of dwell on certain things. Um, But thankfully, I am. I'm just in such a better place than I was when I was younger in my career Mm -hmm. um, mentally. And um, I think that this injury happened for a reason. There's definitely been a fire lit within me. You should have seen me cross training at my gym. Like people thought I was a crazy person. (laughs) Um, (laughs) And I just told myself every day, like I am going to come back so much more focused so much more in tune with myself and my plan. And, um, I have not given up on it. I still am very confident. I had my first workout back, um, yesterday. 
So I did something on the treadmill just to keep it controlled. Um, but I really didn't lose that much fitness. Um, I was getting down to like five Oh five pace at the end. And, um, I have a long run tomorrow. So yeah, I'm just going to be really careful and, um, I'm not going to make mistakes. I'm, I'm curious on that note in one of your more recent YouTube videos, you mentioned, I think kind of getting caught up with your training and not really speaking out for like how you were feeling. Uh, going yeah. like going forward, how what's your like plan of attack for making sure that you're not getting caught up and you're still focused on your goals, but also like listening to make sure you're responding to your body. It's it's a tough uh, industry to be in, um, and for way too many years, I didn't stand up for myself, or I just I would get pulled this way and that way with my body and my health. And I've had way too many broken bones. I've had, I've almost ruined my knees for life. And, um, at some point you have to not care what people think and be like, this is what's best for me. This is my Olympic dream. And I get to have a say in what I'm doing. And, um, yeah, you got to have some tough conversations and um, stand up for yourself. I'm almost 30 years old and it's time for me to advocate for myself. Um, and I, I, I want other athletes to do that for themselves as well. I mean, it wasn't like, it wasn't anyone's fault. It was my fault for not saying, Hey, I don't want to do this and I'm not going to, you know, that's, that's why I kind of mentioned like getting caught up with it. Cause it's not like, it's you versus your coach or so. No, yeah. yeah. No. It just kind of things yeah, just, back in the wrong direction. Mm-hmm. Totally. Yeah. Just team dynamics are, they're very powerful. Like team dynamics are a very good thing and we, we lift each other up. But when you're not listening to your own self, um, you're going to run into some injuries basically. Cause I don't know, like I just can't, I get like FOMO or something and I just can't like settle down sometimes. So <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, especially today more, more than ever, but really the last few years with the like social media phase and Strava and everything, like I think oh. everyone can relate to that because everyone is looking at their competitors and seeing, Oh man, they did, eight by a mile today. I only did five by a mile. Right. Like I'm a wuss or whatever. Like I need to go work harder and everyone does get caught up in each other's, you know, their training, whatever in each other's and it's like Instagram too. People are only going to post the workouts where they crushed it. They're not posting the five where they, you know, dropped out early or whatever the case is. So, <laughs> yeah. so is like, how, how much do you pay attention to, I guess, Instagram, Strava, anything like of your competitors and what they're doing, or do you just like stay away from all of that and just focus on what's best for you? I hate to admit that I pay attention to Instagram way too much. Um, I hate Instagram so much, but it is like a powerful tool in the society we live in. It's a part of the job. Um, And it's so addicting though. Like I just... I don't like to see uh, what other people are doing because yeah, especially if they're my competitors, I'm like, I, I want to get ready to go. I'm like going to call them up and be like, let's race right now. <laughs> <laughs> I don't do the straw thing. Dear God. I don't do that. Yeah. I, I don't wear a watch when I run either. So I, I with numbers, I just stay away from that. That's, that's a, yeah, that's an interesting approach. So you don't, so like, say you're going out for, well, I guess we could do both scenarios, an easy run versus a workout then. So on an easy run, are you literally just going out and saying, I'll run until I feel like it's enough? Like, I feel like I'm good with stopping here or are you actually, are you still like getting a time on it? You just don't know what the pace is. So I go out watchless. I go out without even looking at the clock. Usually, um, I've been doing this for a long time, like over a decade. So I pretty much know what six miles is. Um, And I've even, I don't 
wear a watch in my long runs either, but I play this little game with myself where I'll go explore, come back, and then I'll I'll come back and map it out on like map my run or yeah. whatever. And then it'll be like the exact mileage. It's so That's weird. Cool. So I just have this like internal clock and like mileage calculator that I don't need a watch. I don't need to be like oh, Oh, wait, guys, hold on. Two more steps. Like, that's so annoying to me. <laughs> yeah, that I, that's a great, I mean, that's a great approach. Like, pe- oh yeah, I just yeah. got back to being a mileage tour and I already hate it. I, you know, the fact that like I care. You like it a little bit. I mean, well, that's the thing is like, it's like addictive to be like, oh, I'm at 6.98, like gotta get to seven today. It, it can It can sometimes work in your favor, I guess, yeah. if you're like, I don't know. Some some people probably where they they for whatever reason like hitting a seventy mile week versus hitting a sixty two mile week like they have the extra motivation because they see the number. Like I could see where that could be the case, but then more often than not, it's probably going to either if you're doing too much, it's going to lead to an injury, or you're just going to like judge yourself based on the splits. And the day the day you have a, a workout or a run that's slower than the other day and it's right. harder, then you're like, oh man, am I less fit? Am I what? So I think more often than not, it's going to work against you. Yeah. But I think if you can ignore that, it becomes really powerful because then you, then in the middle of a run and you split something really fast, you're like, oh wow, I'm like in shape. As long as you can ignore all the times that you're you're still right. much but, and, that, and that doesn't happen that often. Yeah. Where you, it's it's rarer to have those <laughs> runs like those runs that every runner knows where you go out and you're just like you feel like you're effortless and like floating. Those are like the best feelings ever. Mm-hmm. But you just don't have that many of them compared to the days that are just like slogs. So, oh so yeah. Gosh. How old are you guys? Twenty five. Twenty eight. Twenty five. Oh, just you wait. <laughs> okay. When you turn, I'm going to turn 30 in two weeks and basically every day feels horrible. <laughs> I'm just going to say it like yeah, every yeah. day it takes me 30 minutes to warm up. And then finally I'm like, I guess I feel a little better. <laughs> it's weird. Oh, but yeah. Right before we started recording this, I was just mentioning like, this is my down week. And I feel horrible. Like compared to the last month of training, <laughs> I feel so bad. And now it's messing with your head. Yeah, it and is. Now it's with, you're like, <laughs> why do I feel like this? Yeah. yeah. So yeah. No, I, I used to be in college. I was the person who could wake up and then ten minutes later be running. Just wake up and like be out the door. And now it's like I need an hour at least, and I'm like sipping mm-hmm. my coffee and sitting on the couch. So no matter what, it's, it's not yeah. for me. It's not so much as like leading up to the run. It's like guaranteed my first mile is going to be like slowest oh that too yeah yeah that it, yeah. It, yeah it's crazy the more fit you get the slower you need your first miles to be <laughs> well yeah i love running with um the kenyan americans because they they have it all right man like they they go so slow on their easy days and their warm-ups and it's awesome because you don't like you really need to move slow at first just to like move like just get the body going first um especially with the amount of mileage that we're doing you know yeah so so do you even know what sort of mileage you're running i guess you said you kind of map it slash you under you like know in your head roughly how much is so you kind of have a ball you have at least a close ballpark of what you're doing okay yeah for sure and my coach knows he knows me by now and he's like like he doesn't need to see what i'm doing on strava like he yeah. knows that I can take care of what needs to be done. I think when I was training in Florida, so I was running with the girls on the team there and um, they definitely, you know, calculate the mile and like the loops are marked out. And typically well, when I'm at home, if I feel my body, like it's time to stop running today, mm-hmm. I'll just, you know, I can turn around and I can stop. But I think, yeah, that's when the numbers become a problem because it's like, oh, 10 miles is on my schedule today. I have to do 10 miles. But it's like, do you have to do 10 miles or can you run eight and then keep training, you know? Yeah, right. Definitely. I, yeah, I'm, I'm totally with you on that. And could I could do a better job of that as well of just – like even even on even on interval days, like if like so, I have a coach and he'll give me paces. But it's like, say he gives me whatever five oh five pace. It's like 
if I run 510 or 515 pace, it doesn't really make a difference as long as that's the right effort. But in my head, I'm right. just like, I got to hit the 505 pace, even though mm-hmm. I don't really need to hit the. That's why know. I like ranges for ranges. Things. Ranges are that good. It, just ballpark or like I, I even just like this should be like, I don't know pretty hard yeah. <laughs> like, like I'm, I, fine. I'm fine with that what like, i it's, what i don't like is when um pretty hard <laughs> well pretty when hard I, not I, like super hard what i don't like hard. is when it's like oh this should be at 5k pace because then i'm just like super dishonest with myself <laughs> oh yeah oh I'm, let's run let's run five flat pace i'm, I'm a 13 minute 5k guy <laughs> yeah, i'm gonna yeah. go really hard today yeah, <laughs> yeah. like why am, I, why am i doing my intervals oh so yeah fast? this is bullshit no it's prescribing paces at 5k pace or yeah. 10k pace i'm always in my head i'm like what's my goal like right. for the 5k and then i yeah. try to hit that and it's not a not a good way to work out <laughs> yeah yeah workouts can be such a mind i'm not gonna finish that yeah. sentence, but you know yeah. what i'm you know where oh. i was going with that. oh absolutely <laughs> so so are you running with anyone regularly currently training with anyone i know you had like a camp in florida that you were training with some folks are is that are you back on your own now yeah so uh, I'm based out of Denver. Um, I do like four to five training stints with my team a year. And those are really beneficial. And um, I really vibe with my team. And um, those have been fun. Florida was, you know, just, it was, it was what it was. Like I got injured. So whatever, moving forward. But here in Denver, I, I do a lot of training by myself, but I also drive down um, south and I have some training buddies in Colorado Springs that um, really have helped me run those 10K, 5K paces. Um, That's really hard to do by yourself. So um, that's been a really beneficial thing for me. Um, And yeah, I, I've really grown to, sorry, I live in the city. And it's <laughs> we we totally it. understand yeah. that. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Uh, there's like riots going down like really close by right now. Um, okay, yeah, we, we had a couple of thousand people gathering. We had, uh, yeah, similar in Chicago too. Yep. Oh uh, yeah, I'm sure. But yeah, so I've really, I've learned to uh, see the value in training with people. Um, it's it's definitely, you know, something that holds you accountable. It raises the bar uh, when you're training by yourself, which I do love to do because I use, I use running as a form of meditation and that's hard to do when you're with people. Like I don't run easy days with people. Yeah. I don't like doing that. I want to do my own easy day. Um, but hard days, it's, it's almost like intimate with people you're working out with. You are really going there with people and like, bettering yourself and it's cool it, it is like a strangely deep level of connection when you, yeah. when you run with someone like you don't even have to talk to them and you just like there's there's a connection there it's mm-hmm. it's pretty crazy i don't know i don't know if other sports really have that i totally agree with take like easy days on my own and then like i much prefer working out with other people as opposed to doing easy days with other people yeah Definitely. Yeah. Especially like, now. I don't want to talk about what you had for breakfast. I don't care. <laughs> yeah. I run. Like, <laughs> especially right now where I'm like, yo, that's my hour out of the house. I need to just yeah. decompress. And, yeah, yeah. Totally. Yeah. So, are, are you planning to be in Colorado up through the, the trials at this point and uh, just train there? Yeah. I think that if I'm feeling good, um, I think is that next week already. Um, Actually in two weeks, I might go to Michigan uh, for this three K race that my coach is putting on. It's not to like do anything fancy. It's just to do like a rust buster. Mm -hmm. And that might be fun because I really like Michigan when it's like warm there. Um, And then after that, I will be just getting ready to, try to PR in the 5k at the sound running event in LA. Mm -hmm. Um, and then maybe the 10k at Portland track fest. Um, I, I like to race a lot. I feel like that's the best experience you can get going into a championship race. Um, so yeah, I'll try to get some in and probably get my ass kicked. Um, (laughs) 
at least once or twice before the trials, which I don't mind. Better to get your ass kicked now than at the trials. Definitely. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. There's nothing better than a good ass beat. Like, because then you can really like whip yourself into shape and be like, I don't want that to happen again. And um, I know exactly like what I'm going to do to make sure that doesn't happen again. When it's also just like benchmarking, like if you go so long without racing and then you have a bad race, it's like, oh, well, I didn't even know. Maybe was it a fluke or like, what do I have to compare this against? Whereas if you're like benchmarking frequently, then nothing is really unexpected. Yeah. 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 I also, I also personally, like the more I race, the more maybe maybe, there's a, there's obviously a limit on it, but like the more I race, the more I get motivated to, like, if you go like three months without racing, like you just, you don't realize that your motivation is just kind of dropping two years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. (laughs) But but then you, but then you run a race and like, even if you don't do super well, but you're like, you're back out there, you get that like runner's high again, then you're like, then in your head, you're like, man, like, I'm excited to train some more. Like I can do better than that. I can beat that time. So I, yeah, I'm with you. Like I think racing a few times just keeps you like motivated. There's always something to look forward to in your training. Like it it definitely can play a huge benefit. And like that feeling, like you got to practice that nervous feeling because it's, Oh, it's so dreadful. Right. Like the moments before the race are just like, kill me kill me now why am I doing this yep. <laughs> um and then like you really question why you're doing it and then after the race you're like oh yeah yeah I love that's it. why I do this yeah <laughs> unless it's a bad race and then you're like maybe I should what? retire <laughs> <laughs> maybe this is it yeah <laughs> that's funny like for me it's always at the beginning like right before the race I'm like yawning and like I don't care and then the first like 30 percent of it is just like me completely just shitting the bed. And then I'm like, oh, this is what racing is again. I I remember. But yeah, yeah, I think it's important to not get to, I feel like that's the difference between like high school and college runners is college runners are like, oh, I know exactly how long this workout or race is going to be. And I'm not going to lose my absolute mind on the first quarter of it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I miss doing that. I, I, I was known to do that in high school. Because I would like tear struggle. out yeah, and yeah. Like, people would like start coming back and I'd be like, <laughs> oh, I, I, I like running ahead, like being chased is so much better than getting chased out or, uh, chased oh my, oh wait, what? So you like being wait, chased or you? You're, you're I saying like you being, like, I like being chased. Oh no, yeah. I'm not. No way. I'd rather chase someone down. Come on. Oh, interesting. <laughs> Not me. I'd rather be like scared for my life running. Yeah. Like, okay. So you two are. Yeah. yeah. Like just, it just adds like, especially cause um, like if, if you're super, if you're a head case like me, like I will like, won't look back during a race and I just like psych myself up and I'm like, okay, like they're right there. I can, I can hear them. So like yeah. extrapolate that to 10 meters. Like, yeah, uh, yeah. it's, it's kind of fun. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so so do you have do you have to run a a trials time still or did you already hit that so i got the a standard in december i got that's a big right. pr oh, yeah the sound the sound running meet in december that's right the 32 okay. you ran like 32 for the 10k right no i ran 31 12 oh shit i mi- wow i missed something there okay <laughs> yeah you're so a bit off corrected <laughs> well there we go <laughs> <laughs> um I don't know yeah, I, I never I in my life thought I could run that time until Reason. one month before. I wrote it down on my mirror. That's about 502 yeah. miles. Um, and so I wrote 502, and then I made sure I practiced that pace consistently. And um, that race, all the stars aligned. Um, all of us girls were there to get the time. And like we were just all so happy to be there together. Um, and yeah, I got fifth there, but I think I, I could have like gone for the win, but a voice in my head was like, we didn't come here to do that. We came here to get the time or maybe that's just my excuse for not winning the race, but <laughs> there was it's a, it's I a pretty that decent excuse, voice though. in my head that told me not to kick and I didn't kick. Um, but I had a kick. If I practice my kick, um, 
you can expect me in the top three at the trials if if the stars align again. Right. Right. It, what, do you have like a, an approach that you're thinking of there? Like, is it, uh, do you want the race to be fast probably, um, because you are one of the faster in the field or, or do you want it to come down to like a, a big push the last mile or two? I don't want to say that I want anything because what, like God's going to play a funny game with me where he'll do the opposite. <laughs> <laughs> so tell us what you don't want and then he'll do the opposite and you'll be good to go. <laughs> okay. Well, I would say that I want it to be an honest race because I don't have the speed. Carissa better not run this race. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I don't want those Bowerman babes coming in the 10K because they do have the speed. Rachel Snyder has the speed. Um, I have speed. It's just not honed in on yet. Um, and I think that if it were a more honest race, then they could, some of them could die out a little bit. And I don't know. Well, I have to be ready for whatever. For whatever um, happens. Yeah. 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 I need to turn into like Usain Bolt that last hundred. So. <laughs> so, I mean, the speed doesn't, well, obviously speed matters, but like the speed doesn't matter as much. It's at the end of the 10K. So it's not like about the raw speed. So like regardless of whatever Krissa can run for a 3K or a 1500, like that's not super relevant at the end. Like we saw like in the last 10K she did, um, when it was Elise, I think Elise like out kicked her pretty mm. like handily in the last 200. So like that showed there that Car like Carissa has a lot of speed, but you know, there are scenarios where, she, I mean, she's running a PR. But so a 10K is a 10K. A 10K is a 10K. Yeah. So it's like, you're not necessarily going to be able to close fast. So the strength is still more important uh, on yeah. that piece. And usually actually for whatever reason, the women's races typically are like more honest paces then a lot of the guys races will be way more chill yeah, like sit and super kick. tactical <laughs> i feel like women, women's races are always like way more honest across the board when i watch guys races i literally get frustrated i'm like that what the heck are they and like yeah. you guys no one has the balls sorry but yeah. no one has the balls to go <laughs> yeah it's true and then it's like sit and kick and then i think race like every championship race i've done is some like some vet takes the first mile out in five flat and i'm like here we go yep <laughs> yep yeah and i don't i don't know why that is like it yeah it, it, it is interesting it's like very rare i don't i don't know why but it reminds like so my Parents. Women are tougher. That's why. I, yeah. I mean, obviously, <laughs> honestly, like um, all the guys are like scared. They're like, oh, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know. They're all measuring themselves up and they're like, oh, like the only way I'm going to beat this guy is if I'm fresh with 400 to go. Right. So I need to just like chill out. I don't I, like the, just call it like the testosterone effect. I'm playing <laughs> off, like the, the audience cheer. I, it's so weird because my my parents both really like watching figure skating of all things, but they'll only watch women figure skate, not men. Same with gymnastics. Really? Yeah. That's in, what. What is figure skating again? Is that where it's? Oh no, like the dancey one or the fast one? Uh, that's the dancey one. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I uh, yeah, I like watching that too. But know. it's so diff. Like I can't believe that's like in the same category as what we do because it's such a different sport. Or is it? I mean, it does take a similar mentality. I don't know. I'm going down a road here. <laughs> yeah, rap. I think that is, that's probably like what you could say is the similarity across all athletics is just like the mental piece of just yeah. like focusing in nothing else matters. Like you're in the moment and just whatever you've practiced it so many times that muscle memory just, you just deliver. But I think that's that, like the, the commonality of across all sports. I think running is different though. Cause it's like no other sport maybe like cycling and other endurance sports, no other sports play out so slowly, like in reality. Like if you're, if you're playing yeah, baseball, fair enough, fair enough, you yeah. have 0.3 seconds to swing. Right. But when you're running and somebody makes a move, whether or not your brain tells you that you can respond to it, you can always respond to it. And it's more about like conquering yourself than like. Well, that's a good point because that is my favorite thing about long distance running, even compared to sprinting, like, which is also running, but it's not as much 
of an emphasis on genetics. It's more an emphasis on like your willpower, your training, months and months of training, your strategy, your tactics, yeah. um, because it does play out over a long period of time. So like in, in your race, I've always been curious, do you try and shut your brain off or do you try and pay attention like 100% of the time? Um, in the race, do I shut my brain off? Um, no, 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 I don't do that. I, that's a bad idea okay. because then you're, you're falling off already. You got to be it for my own experience. You have to constantly refocus your mind. Otherwise, if you like go into the blackout where you kind of just let the pain like zone you out. You're, you're already like two steps behind your competitor, even if you're staying on the pack. Um, I don't know. I really try to uh, focus my thoughts as much as I can during the race. And that's why it's meditative for me because it's a skill, um, especially when it's like as hard as it is. Yeah. So, so I'm guessing then when you're, when you go out and run, you're not, you're never like listening to music or anything. Are you always just, just you? Oh no. Like on easy days, I, yeah, I, I zone out, I take it in. I, sometimes I just stop and walk and like, um, just really try to enjoy it. Um, yeah. I like listening to music on the treadmill because oh. it, I mean, that's it, a given. <laughs> yeah, that's a given. <laughs> yeah. Dude, I watch, um, I watch full blown movies on the treadmill. <laughs> do you? Oh yeah. That sounds horrible. Like I need like, like fast paced, like keeping me amped up. If I, if I'm trying to do something, I'm never doing a hard session on the treadmill. Yeah, fair, I'm just like, oh, I need to hang out here for an hour. <laughs> My yeah. like, head bounces too much. I can't like look at the screen. It like <laughs> it bothers me. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Some people. I listen to techno that. and I oh, just there like, we go. there we go. Yep. Zone in. <laughs> Is that the, uh, now, now let's go into the music tangent. So what, what are, what are some of the genres of choice, I guess? Do you, all right. Yeah. What, what's your diff, depending on the activity you're doing, what are some genres that are your go-tos? Okay. Um, I am a techno person. Uh, I know some people don't like, they can't understand techno and I can, I can understand how they don't understand it. Um, but I think it's so perfect for what I do for running all. I, I don't, I hate listening to people sing when I'm running or just in general, I don't, I like songs with words, but I don't like to listen to them all the time because I don't like people telling me what to think about. Yeah. With yeah. techno, you just have a beat, you have drops, it pumps yeah. you up. You can really think about whatever you want and uh, when you're hammering out interval intervals on the treadmill, um, it just, it keeps you going. Sure. Um, Plus and the, then the cadence is typically like close to 180. And yeah, that. you can also get the cadence to be what you want it to be, honestly, because there's, there's like it, the range. Yeah. yeah, yeah. There's the range of, <laughs> of music there. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And then outside of that, I, I have this really weird genre on Spotify that's amazing. Like my discovery playlist is always amazing. I don't know what the genre is though. It's like alternative indie meets techno or something. Like, I don't know what it is. Like, name a few. Artists. Yeah. I was going to say, do you have an artist name that, cause maybe we yes. it. So have you heard of mind chatter? I just recently got into them. Not mind chatter. No, no, we're listening to tonight. Yeah. Well, <laughs> definitely check it out. Check it out. It's weird. It's almost like a tame Impala, but like different. Um, I don't know. It's hard to explain. And then I like, um, recently I've been listening to like old school nineties rap. Okay. Um, yeah. That's it's like so my, much better like than time. modern day rap. Um, and I don't know, I can just like, I'm just this little white girl, but like, I, <laughs> I love the music. It gets me going. I've been listening to that a lot, um, at the gym. So <laughs> that's good. So, so on the techno side, do you have like artists there or is it just whatever Spotify feeds up to you in the genre? Um, so actually when I'm listening to techno, I use YouTube because okay. 
um, there was all, all the shows were canceled yeah. last year. So a lot of DJs would do sets by themselves and just do them in like dope locations. Um, and there's just, um, uh, so it's called dark minimal techno. It has like, you know, a dark vibe. It's not like extreme techno with like that mm-hmm. peak and then the drop. It's like, I, it's more mature. It's more European, um, yeah, European yeah. techno. Yep. Man, you, you would, uh, we're, we're going to be at the Kansas city qualifier meet in a couple of weeks, I guess when this okay. podcast comes out in like a week and, uh, uh, Kiran uh, Leonard, he's, he's going to DJ there. And like what you're describing is exactly You'll the like type of music that he like creates as a DJ. Yeah. I guess he doesn't create the music that he DJs it's like but, progressive house. Yeah. Yeah. But, but it's, a, it's the, yeah. Euro, it's European and it's, yeah, it's exactly like you're mentioning, but I, I so cool. <laughs> yeah. Sim- similarly, I, I definitely like the, like I'll watch, uh, different DJs sets, like at Red Rocks uh, in, in in Denver area, and I, I just love that. Even even when the stands are empty, like in the past year, where they're just like mm-hmm. still there though, and they do the virtual events, it just makes it so much cooler to have the like have the visuals and all the lights yeah. and everything as as a part of it. You should come to an actual Red Rocks show sometime. It's like I the actually, best. Uh, like two years ago. Two years ago it was the only time I've ever been to Red Rocks, and I saw Zed's Dead at Red Rocks. Oh, nice. It was wow. amazing. It was so fun. I'm so butthurt I didn't go. Yeah. Oh God, it was incredible. You messed up. <laughs> yeah, you did. And, <laughs> and I also was able to sneak down. Like I just got general admission, but. We kind of like, you know, we were, we we're feeling pretty brave. We had a few beers in us and we, we kind of snuck down. And when the security guard was like getting mad at someone else for trying to sneak into VIP, we kind of like went under the rope and got in. And so we were like front row for Zed's yeah. like for the last half of the show. And it was, yeah, that's fun. I, I would literally see any genre of music, any concert at Red Rocks. Oh, it is sure. the coolest venue to be outside yeah. and just, I don't know. It, it's yeah. It's otherworldly. It's, it's crazy. Yeah. Once, uh, once you're in, well, I guess, where's the first place you're going to in Colorado? Yeah. So I'll actually be in Colorado. I'm going to do a little sabbatical from work this summer and I'm going to be living, uh, a few different places. So most of my time I'm going to spend in Dillon, uh, and, and do some, some trail running, uh, in Dillon, D- Dillon, oh, Dillon, Silverthorne. Yeah. And I love Dillon. I'll also spend some time like West in Telluride, uh, Durango area too. But uh, okay, wow! I thought you were gonna say Boulder, so I'm glad you said other places. No, I, I, I mean I like Boulder. Boulder's fine, but Dude, I, like- I don't know. I'm all about the personally. I kind of like the seclusion aspect mm-hmm. of being in the mountains, and just like you're you're like a 45 minute drive from basically any mountain or trail that you could ever want. And so, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to do that for the summer and I'm a, try my hand at some trail running and see how that goes for a change. Hell yeah. I'm, so pretty, that's so I'm, awesome. I'm yeah. for sure like a boulder simp. Like yeah, I, you're I, definitely I, a boulder guy. I, I know that, I know that boulder <laughs> is basic, but like, I can't, I can't deny my instincts, you know? <laughs> uh, boulder is amazingly beautiful. Um, I, can't stand Boulder though. <laughs> I my both of my parents are from Boulder. Um, I have a lot of family who lives in Boulder, so it, it's nothing new to me. But I can't get over the whole college town feel. Like yeah, either people, rich people who move from California who take over. Everyone's mean. You get yelled at there. There is is yeah. much less yeah. um, much less homey than the rest of Colorado is. I would say. I like the Denver grunge. The real hippies live in Denver. Denver, <laughs> grunge, Denver grunge is legit. Are, are, yeah. so are you are you right downtown area then in Denver? Yep. I sure oh, am. Let's yeah, let's see it. Oh, oh here we go. Gonna... Okay. Yep. Here. Very cool. Little house tour for you guys. <laughs> I love this about my... I, I don't live like in any super nice place or anything i actually there's like a homeless camp right over there um (laughs) but yeah i have a view yeah Um, and i i'm a city girl i like to just like explore and um walk to coffee shops and yeah um you can really you can be alone in a city without feeling alone you know yeah absolutely that is that is definitely the nice thing. Like this this summer will be a good test for me on 
like understanding, do I like city life better or do I actually like True. mountain life? Cause I don't know. I mean, maybe mountain life after a few weeks will be like a little isolated. So I'm, I'm curious to see that, but I, I don't you, know. No, you'll love that. That's really refreshing too. I'm glad you're doing that. It's, it's yeah. going to be cool. Are you, do you uh, venture into trail running at all? Or are you, are you more on the, are, what, what do you like more like roads, track trails? Do you have a preference? Yes. Um, I like the track and the roads. I do like, I grew up trail running. Um, mm-hmm. Speaking of Red Rocks, I grew up five minutes from there oh, nice. in that valley. Um, yeah. So like every day was a trail run for me growing up. Um, but I like to go fast. Like <laughs> you can't do that on trails. Um, and that bothers me. I don't like twisting my ankles. Yep. Um but it's so cool. Like when you're doing it for fun, I've never ran for fun, really. Like it's always been very serious. Um, but I think when I retire, um, it'll be a different story. Definitely. Yeah. That, then that will be the thing that I'm looking forward to. I, I signed up for the Pikes Peak marathon in August. So that's kind of what yeah. I'm training for, but like literally no stakes on it or pressure. It's like, I'm going to show up and like, whether I run whatever three and a half hours or five and a half hours like i it doesn't really matter no you <laughs> should put you should win it I, you no, it right? your your fellow denver uh native seth demore he's pretty freaking fast so that's probably not going to happen but we'll see <laughs> okay well i, I mean i'm gonna try i'm not i'm not i'm not yeah i'm gonna show up and say i'm gonna go for the win but there there's definitely some good runners there for sure so okay. we'll, we'll see what happens yeah. Sorry. I, I will have the, the, I guess the one benefit is that I will like being in the Dillon area, it's at like 9,000 feet. So I'm going to have some good altitude gains. I'm hoping by the time the marathon comes around. Yeah. I did a workout around that lake in Dillon, uh, right before I took about 30 seconds off my 5k PR. Nope. Um, it was like the week before and that, that altitude will really uh, get you in shape. <laughs> yeah. Can, can, are you, are you in tune with the, the differences at this point with like, I mean, you live at altitude, but I guess probably kind of on the lower end of altitude, Denver, like, can you tell a huge difference? Like 5,000 feet versus even Colorado Springs is like in the 6,000s Six and, and then going up to Dillon, mm-hmm. like 9,000, you can tell it, tell a big difference. I'm assuming. Even just going down to Colorado Springs, it's like 1000 feet difference yeah. or like maybe a little more. Yeah, you're like huffing and puffing, and it it's so weird how it does that. But um, once you go back down to sea level, it's really cool because you feel like you like cheated or something. <laughs> Definitely, <laughs> and we'll have to get some YouTube collabs this summer. That'll be fun. That would be fun. Yeah. What's so? What's the plan with the? Speaking of YouTube, what's the plan with the, is there any plan with the YouTube channel? You just make videos for fun kind of as you feel like it. Uh, do you have any, any big, I don't know, big picture things that you're trying to make or, or any ideas? Yeah, I, I love YouTube. It's really hard though. It takes so much time. Um, and like, I don't like, I like the vlogging idea, but I also don't love the idea of filming myself all day. Like I get half, I've done vlogs and then I get halfway through it and I'm like, am I still filming myself today? Like this, I can't do it all the time. And and then you edit your face for like hours and it's like, it's, there's like a certain vanity to it, but also like insecurity and like all the other bullshit that goes into putting yourself out there. Um, but I definitely have a direction with it. I want it to be just, I want my personality to come out and I want a very raw, genuine, authentic insight into what I do. Um, because like you said, like most people only post, you know, their, the good things that are happening. And one of my YouTube titles was I did horrible in my race or, Sometimes I post myself crying and (laughs) that's what I like about YouTube. Like whenever I feel sad, I'll just YouTube a random person talking about whatever. And it makes me feel better Mm -hmm. because it's relatable. And, um, 
I love editing too. Like I like how you can have the shittiest footage or like content. And then if you're a good editor, it can be like hilarious or like cool. Yeah. It's an art. And it is, it is really like the authenticity and like the connection to the person. It matters way more than the quality of the video or anything else. Like other running YouTubers prove that, you know, like it's not, you don't have to have like the most amazing equipment or production. Like it is really about that authenticity, but, but also, yeah, like I, I'm, I'm totally the person that's like, ah, that footage was like subpar but i'll fix it in post like i'll fix it i'll fix the audio later i'll fix all this stuff and then it's like oh my god it's so much work to actually to actually edit it but yeah (laughs) it's fun though it it is fun to be creative and and do that at the same time but yeah it's also tough to do that every single day like it's kind of it's fun like one day a week or one day every other like other week it's like okay i'm gonna film a few things today but then you're like okay like that was draining like give me give me another couple weeks to build up the courage to do this again I do one a month, but on any social platform, and you guys do a really good job with this, um, because consistency is key. Mm -hmm. And like, you really should, if you want to take it seriously, you really should be doing at least one a week. Um, But I'm not, I can't do it. I just hope I become an Olympian and then mine blows up, but that probably won't happen. Or the blowing up part, the Olympian (laughs) part will happen. But I just don't want to put the work in to like sell myself to the internet sometimes, you know? It's not like, I feel like that's almost, I don't know, like selling yourself at least with your specific flavor of of YouTube with like the blog aspect and just being like, hey, I'm crying because I'm injured and like this sucks. Like that's what people actually want. Well, it's relatable. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's like, like, it's, I feel like it's more of a matter of, comment like being comfortable with editing your face uh yeah and and yeah. just like staring at well for us like staring at both of us on the, on the, <laughs> the camera. for like a good hour and a half or something like that yeah the only reason we're consistent on youtube is because of the podcast if it wasn't for the podcast we would like we wouldn't be going out and filming a video every week that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah you guys definitely have a way more clear-cut direction and like you're involving other people and yeah, it's you guys are set up for success. So we'll see. We're we're trying. One of, so speaking of being insecure and YouTube and uh, involving other people, one thing that we did was ask for people to roast me, and oh. I'd love it if you could kick off Chris's roasting session. Oh uh, man, you're really putting her on the spot here. Yeah, I don't know. Can you roast? Chris? I don't like roasting people. I don't like being mean. Um. <laughs> <laughs> it's not being mean because it's you're just, you're just messing around. So, so as part of your episode, uh, the last, the last episode, what, we, I don't know. We kind of time things weird because like you record an episode and then it, like sometimes it comes out the the next week and then or like the coming week. Sometimes it's the next week, but. We were we asked we solicited for roasts of Adam and so part of the intro for your episode is going to be all those roasts in a row <laughs> and so we're hoping to get a lot of a lot of listeners on that but uh, but I think so next next is my turn to we're gonna solicit roasts on me as part of that yeah. now as part of the intro and then me next so if you want if you want to be next <laughs> or or should we do like just like only like positive like praise for or like saying everyone everyone calls in and they're like natasha you're winning the olympic trials you're you're going let's, to let's going to tokyo go. yeah like we yeah. can get a bunch no, of i kind of want to be roasted <laughs> <laughs> I See, that's right. like, not mean. It's, it's funny like i don't know it's funny like people were roasting adam and everything they said i was like so oh that's funny. a great that's a great it's so funny yeah that's a great uh call on <laughs> things to call him out on i like it that's good <laughs> I, I'm down, but I don't want to go first because, like, I never really roasted someone before. And, yeah. like, I what if I just, like, say the meanest thing they've ever mm-hmm. heard or something? It would be, <laughs> be a great roast. Here's what we can do. If you if you come up with a roast for either of us, whatever it is, you can just you can just DM it to us. And then what we did with some some people's roasts, they 
like texted it in instead of wanting to use their voice. And so we just put it through like one of the AI uh, voice oh. generators. So we did like one of them was Donald Trump's voice. One of them was <laughs> George W. Bush's voice. And so if you have something, it can be completely anonymous and it'll just, we'll throw it in the, in the uh, AI voice uh, generator and then it'll come out that okay. way. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I might take you up on that. Cause okay. I, there's nothing mean I could even say about you. Like I'm <laughs> surprised. <laughs> there are some really good ones. Yeah. You be, I guess you, maybe you don't w- know me well enough at this point, uh, to be able to dig into all my shortcomings and, you know, insecurities. Insecurities. <laughs> yes. <laughs> How about you guys roast me? Give me an example. Ready? Go. Oh gosh. Yeah, Adam has to go first because he was the one who solicited this. Like, it's on you mm. to to be mean first. I'm know. like chugging my beer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, take a big gulp and build up the courage. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> more like more like think of something. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yeah, this is already. Gonna, he, he says it's easy. He's like, oh, oh you can just roast someone. Uh, but then he can't do it. I, I think I'm close. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> He's not close. Well, I was going to do some play off of your closing YouTube clip. Like, it's we were debating whether it's you as, like, a Pokemon trainer or if it's just, like, another, like, anime thing. Like, your closing credits. Yes. Oh yeah. Roast me on that, please. Yeah. Um, (laughs) So, so is it Pokemon or is it just like some random? It's not Pokemon. Okay. At first, at first we like, at first glance, we were like, Oh, that's like a team rocket character. Yeah. And then we were like, Oh wait, no, I don't think it's so wrong. Yep. I'm going to blow your mind right now. There is an anime. There is an anime about racehorse girls racehorse girls and it's called pretty derby um uma masami pretty derby it's a japanese anime and it's a show about my life um it's about <laughs> racehorse girls um so they're a girl but they have like a tail okay. and they like um race around like racehorses they train they cross train they swim and it's just like so relatable. It is literally like an anime made about my life. Um, and yeah, so that's one of the char- that's the main character from that. Okay. And um, I thought it was more obvious that she was a racehorse girl, but now that I'm thinking about it, like, she has why a- would you think it's a racehorse girl? That's right. like we're only, really see, weird- we're only seeing the front, so you can't. Yeah, you can't see that, and we're only seeing a still image of her, so we don't know. We don't see her in action. You know what I'm going to do for you? I, my next video, the intro will be an actual scene from the anime. Perfect. Perfect. That'll help. Okay, <laughs> good, good. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I'm going to roast myself right now. I always, like, I'm so creative and imaginative. And I always think that I'm, like, doing something so cool. And I, I always think that people will be like, oh, cool. It's like... They like they totally understood my whole point in doing it, but no one ever does. It's like people just think I'm weird. <laughs> I, I don't know about that. I, I think the like the way you edit videos is like so the especially like pushing in like the deep voice or the high voice at the right times, I think that's hilarious. <laughs> like I think that's super funny. I think you have a very similar style to Morgan McDonald. That's what I was gonna say too. Like pulling in memes and like outside <laughs> references. And like, yeah. yeah, I mean half the people aren't gonna get it, but but the people that do but the people are that do sure get it, they're, they're super bought in. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I like that. I like um, just people being different. Yeah. You know? Yeah. There, you can only watch so many videos of someone doing a workout and there's like, you know, a big, like a, a either like a cool, like techno beat in the background or a hip hop song. And they're like just running around the track and it's like, okay, like I've seen that enough times. I don't need to see you right. run another rep. It's, yeah. it's the other stuff, like the story behind the scenes. That's way more entertaining to watch. Yeah. I am not going to film my workouts. I'm just not going to do it. Nope. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and and also like who I don't know I who has a camera person that's always down to just go to your workouts and like 
three apparently times. Apparently, the Brits beast do. But <laughs> they do, yeah. Luckily, like Spencer has uh, like his friend Will that just goes and does that because yeah. Outside of that, like how do you how do you have someone that's like yeah, I'll just right. go watch your workout. Like usually, if you have friends, they're going to run the workout with you. Like usually, they're runner friends. They're going to actually do it. They're not going to just stand there and film you. So it's, I do yeah. have friends like here in Denver. I have friends who I'm like, can you come film me do this real quick, or can you come take a picture of me? And they're like, okay, like. <laughs> Cause that's the like I don't have like that, like I just don't have that at my fingertips, you know. Right. So luckily, I just have friends who know that it's kind of part of my job. It is. But it your is. turn to roast me. Yeah, so you you're off the hook. You you like thought right. that we're oh, yeah. You didn't even it. really do it. Man, so it's, oh now there's like this whole hor- ooh um hmm. <laughs> Who's more of a horse girl, real life Natasha or anime Natasha? <laughs> more of a horse girl? <laughs> you know, like, you know, horse girls. They're kind of, they're fucking. <laughs> real Natasha is. More of a horse girl. Okay, all right. <laughs> yeah, not much of a roast, but, you know. Well, well he was summer. being nice, so I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, this, what this if summer. you like, what if you were just like, you're ugly? That'd be like kind of funny. <laughs> that's like a that's like a boring roast. Yeah, though. that's not a, yeah that's not a real roast. That's it's gonna be real. yeah. I mean, it probably would have been better than the one he just came up with, but you know, it's all right. Mm. <laughs> no, I'll like, keep, I'll keep no, thinking. You know, you keep thinking. Maybe yeah, we'll have to share roast back and forth via the the message the messaging services and, and okay. the comments the comments on YouTube. Next video you upload, Ooh. we'll add a roast to your video. Ooh. You can keep adding. Yes. It. So then, like yeah. We'll keep the conversation going that way. That's fun. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Man, anything else that you want to make sure we cover off on? I think the one other thing that I wanted to ask about, I mean, we're like completely switching topics here, but so the, the trip to Thailand. Uh, I know you've talked about it a little bit on a couple other podcasts, but like going, going there solo and just like going there, did you know, like where you were staying and like what any sort of plans at all? Or did you literally just buy a one way ticket and said, I'm going to just explore and see what happens? Yeah, basically I set up a hotel for my first four days because I was like scared and I I bought like a nice hotel for that time period and then I knew I wanted to stay there for about a month and um I just kind of winged it after that and uh it it went so smoothly and um it was completely safe I it it was affordable um i always had a room to myself, um, always with a lock and a key. Um, and everyone there is, do, was doing the same thing that I was doing. It was people who wanted to get some perspective, who wanted to get away from their lives and just live and just do something different. So it's like a huge, it's like the tourist capital of the world, basically. Um, or one of them. And, uh, I just met so many people and um, I had like some really cool conversations like around a bonfire on the beach at night on PP Island uh, where they filmed. uh, What was that movie? Um, It's like that Leo, whatever. I'm not going to remember the movie. They filmed a lot of movies there because it's just so gorgeous. Uh, What is it? Shutter Island. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Or, Maybe. No, don't. I'm so bad. At this. <laughs> I mean, I'm stupid. No, it's gonna be <laughs> I can't minutes, remember. Like, we're, we're gonna go. But fuck it, look, at, look it up. PP yeah, we'll Island. Look it up. It's spelled Fifi, like P H I P H I. But okay. it's called PP Island. Um, <laughs> and you have to go there someday because it was so cool. Um, and yeah, I just I really needed that. I needed to go by myself and uh, I like doing stuff like that Uh, I like I feel like if I went with someone it would have held me back from everything I could have experienced there totally so 
And yeah. how did you settle on, like, were you doing research before and saying, you know, you want to go somewhere. And so you looked up different places is, and then you just found that as a good option. Is that how it handed, uh, how that opportunity landed or. I hate to admit this, but Instagram convinced me to go to Thailand. <laughs> um, cause like I saw some like crazy pictures. I had a couple of friends who have been there too and okay. who went alone and like one of my friends lived there alone for a long time and they were like, Oh, it's totally fine. Just do it. Um, but yeah, so it was definitely on my bucket list. And when I found out I was not going to have sponsorship anymore, I was like, before I get a corporate job, I am doing this because <laughs> like there's nothing that's more healing than traveling. I think, I think it's like one of the most healing things you can do in your life. Um, just because it gives you perspective. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, I couldn't agree more with that. That's like you, you go on a trip anywhere and you'd see life that you wouldn't even, you don't see in the U S or, or you wouldn't expect. And yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. your perspective it just kind of makes you like realize that you mentally build up a lot of things in your day-to-day -day life that you think you're tied down to, but realistically like, <clears throat> you can pick up a, a bag and like move halfway across the country, yeah. like the world and nothing yeah. really matters. <laughs> it's, it's like, yeah, it's like, similar, matters. Yeah. Exactly. Matters. it's like similarly a scary feeling, but also a, a relieving feeling to be like, like what I, what I do on a day to day basis, like it really doesn't matter. Like nobody Literally really cares. Yeah. It's like, I need to do what I should do to make my, like to be happy, whatever, to enjoy my life. And like, you don't really, yeah, you don't realize like how, I mean, the world's huge. There's so many people out there like what you do really doesn't matter. And yeah. like you sometimes you need to step out and because you feel like, oh, my job is like the weight of the world or whatever. And it's like, yeah. in reality, it doesn't really matter. Like if you left your job, someone yeah. would replace you. It's fine, which is like a scary feeling, but also like kind of relieving at the same time. So you're like, you know what? I, I need to, Yeah, I need to do what I need to do to enjoy my life. And so, you know, if that. Yeah, man, that's it. That's a good uh we should just ask for words of wisdom. That's like a nice, that's the best. Ball. Yeah. That's the best words of wisdom that we, we always make joking words of wisdom <laughs> at the end of our podcast. And uh, this is actual words of wisdom versus our <laughs> live, laugh, love, or whatever we usually say. Do you have any <laughs> words, of, words of wisdom from your Yes, experience? I do. I've, I have so many. Oh, I'm reading yeah. this book, The Power of Now. Okay. Um, this is life changing. Eckhart Tolle, uh, it's really hard. It's hard. It's a, uh, it's all about like ego and consciousness and awareness, but I do have like quotes that I just write down. Like here's one, um, by Helen Keller, keep your face to the sunshine and you can never see the shadows. A blind woman said that. So if you can't do that in your life, you know? Yeah. And then have hope this is a natasha rogers quote i i've been like these are these have been my mantras because i've been going through kind of like a hard time with the injury thing um so have hope hope is bringing your best self to the present moment without knowing the future um so just being present basically i like um, that yeah yeah because yeah, hope like, having hope is difficult for all of us. It's like, yeah, I think yeah. Your, uh, your future book will rival Alexi Pappas's. Book. That's what, that's actually what I was just thinking. Like yeah. Alexi Pappas's book is like done super well and it's yeah. like her telling her story. And I, you know, I think you're, you could have a very similar, uh, very similar type of story that you set up with everything that you've gone through, like running wise, injury wise, and then like completely leaving pro running, coming back and, and all of that. I think that's super unique. So that's yeah. a huge compliment. Um, she is amazing. I actually have avoided reading her book, Ooh. not because I don't want to, but I don't want it to mess with my vision of my book. Right. Um, I think I also, that's, smart. Yeah. that's smart. Yeah. Cause it's very, her, her book is I feel like a lot of people can relate to it. So potentially if you're looking to do something similar, then I think that might be the right decision. Cool. Yeah. If you like, the I, I feel like, I don't know if I could tell everybody about everything though. Cause like, 
Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Some things shouldn't be written down. Like if you like That's a good point. Um, before I forget, if you like the types of books that focus on like mentality and like being present, you should I don't know if you're an audiobook person. Um, I think there's a written version of it, but you should either listen or read. I think the collection is called Out of Your Mind by Alan Watts. Highly recommend it. Oh, yes. Okay. I love Alan Watts. Yeah. Out of Your Mind. Okay. I'm going to write that down. I think it's like 15 hours on tape. So, but it's like all like 30 minute sessions or lectures. Hmm. Cool. Yeah. That dude was brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming on. Uh, everyone yeah. listening, subscribe on YouTube to Natasha Rogers to get something unique unique in the running world for video content. And we already plugged it in the intro. So we're True. plugging oh, it you again know you here. Plugged it in. Already oh, plugged yeah. it. Um, Plug check. Yeah. And make sure you follow along as Natasha qualifies for the Olympic team in 2021. Glad I'm glad that you could share this uh, podcast with us. And then when you blow up, and you make the Olympic team. Hopefully remember you still us. remember us. Yeah. <laughs> of course. This was like one of the, like arguably the funnest podcast that I've done. So Honored we appreciate have it. Me, yeah. Have me back on after I make the Olympics. That's of, what I was, of course, that's what yeah. I was just thinking. What, That'll if, be fun. When you, when you come back from Tokyo, assuming you don't like stay there for multiple months and just enjoy yourself, I'll, <laughs> I'll still be in Colorado. And so we could even meet up and do a live podcast in person and, and cool. hear about the trip. So Really looking forward to that. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Cool. Thank Cheers. you so much. Cheers. Yeah. All right, ladies and gentlemen, and otherwise identified, identified individuals, uh, the glasses are off. It's time for a beer review. <laughs> it is time for a beer review from Mother Earth Brewing Company out. This is from California, right? Mother Earth Brew Co. Uh, Cowley Creamin. I could be taken the wrong way. Let's be honest. Cowley Creamin Vanilla Cream Ale Cream Sickle. That's a mouth load. Yeah. That's I'll like sh- I'll show you a mouth load. No, you won't. Pass. Hard pass. I picked but, the wrong time but, to take my glasses off because I'm trying so, to read okay. this fucking X Factor. What do you think of the graphic design? No, the X Factor has to be if it would be good at a beer mile, remember. Okay, well, in this case, yes. But, uh, you know, I'm just saying. Graphic also, designer, he should make above minimum wage. Yeah. If you've been listening for a while, you know that we always X Factor on the graphic designer. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> should be that, making above minimum wage. Y'all. Now that you mention it, it is kind of dope. Like the Cali like, cream. It stands it's, out. It's, like it's, this, like an, it's like an ice cream cone type of thing. Very summer vibes, but also got like a hippie bus on it. It's pretty chill. We'll see if it tastes like how it looks like. So yeah, remember for our man's calling, we got to rate this on the viability for a beer mile. All right. Once again, shout out Colin Goss, California. Oh, actually, Sent this our way to my address, top secret address that you can find out if you DM us and ask for it. Yeah, extra plug. Please send us more beer. We This is actually really, the last one. This is I the know, last one we have to review. We really enjoy doing beer that our listeners pick out. Yeah, I mean, this isn't available in the stores near us, so. It was a good, that was a good pop. Ooh. I'm going to say this can might like, look how big the mouthpiece is. It's literally a standard can. Literally. Like quite literally, it's the same can as everything else. Cause no, they're all made. That's, that's no, false. Liar. That's false. One's bigger. No, it's Eat the color. Ass. It's the color. Eat my ass. I'm going to show the camera. <laughs> it's, it's the color. One can is a kind of a goldish top, you know, like the standard crispy boy Miller Lite uh, corn cob can. And then you got Dude, like the actual. You're on drugs. No, 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 no. You're on drugs. We need some votes. Hopefully that caught on the video. It might not. Jax, come here. Audience folks. W- weigh in from the audience here. It's the exact All right. same well, can. Chris the exact and his same wife can. are not going to be on That's the show okay. anymore. Let's just, let's just take a deep breath. Four in. One, two. No, we're not doing that again. Okay. Adam just took his first sip. I was, I cheated. I was drinking this during the intro because it Whoa. you know it just looked fire. It kind of tastes like... Dude, besides be the, the, uh, the beer mile portion of this... So let's just first do this is a beer, not beer mile. Just this is a beer. Uh, I'm gonna, well, I just want to say... It tastes exactly like the label looks. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's an X factor. I actually didn't even like look me- that closely at the label and I took a sip the first time and I was like, 
It tastes like a cream, like orange creamsicle, yeah. like fire. Did I did I say something about being like a camp counselor in this episode? Because ho- this is giving me PTSD. You were drinking beers as a camp counselor when you were like 18? No, 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 no. The, the orange sickle. The, oh, oh, yeah. okay. No, I wasn't. Well, I mean, I would have made the job a lot easier if I was. <laughs> oh, boy. We, we promise to be good with your kids if you ever let us nanny or babysit. <laughs> I wish we had a 360 to pan back the checks. <laughs> Don't talk about kids. Well, I was going to bring up Manny's. Oh, hell yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yo, we got, speaking of taking care of kids and how much we love touching them. Speaking of taking care of kids and how much we love playing with them, we have a future <laughs> guest. <laughs> we have a future guest. His name is Ben Coldray, and he's, an, he's a Manny. Dude, Manny, that, oh, I'm fucking excited for that episode. Um, uh, so, so taste first, perhaps taste first, I suppose if we have to do that, I mean, I already got my answer cause I had this during the intro. So I kind of cheated. What do you think of boss? I'm going to go with a seven. Whoa, 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 It's a 10. You think it's 10? It is a 10. It's actually a 10. So the only thing that throws me off and maybe, maybe, maybe once I finish the beer, I'll change my mind about it. It's actually a ten. But the only thing that is throwing me off, it is, it is very like orange, orange sickle. Yeah, exactly. So the taste is a ten. Have you yeah. ever had a beer that tastes like this? Maybe. Has anyone ever produced a beer that tastes like this? No. Hey. Yeah. Oh, uh, so uniqueness, sure. That's ten. But but also the taste. Like but this. also the taste. Like the taste is a factor of. I mean, obviously your preference on how good it tastes, but also like this is something, this is not, this thing would stand out. If you had a lineup of 10 beers in a flight, this would stand out as something completely different. And so it's a 10 on the taste. Yeah, I I think the uniqueness, yeah, it stands out. That's fair. Um, Time will tell if the orange sickle is like, I can do it for more than a beer. That's, That's what I'm considering right now. You could do it for more than a beer. Although I don't, I don't know. Maybe, well, that, maybe that's I'm, not the taste. That's the drinkability. Yeah, true. I'm coming into it with the wrong mindset. That's fine. You picked a seven. Too late to change your mind. You picked the boring no, I'm, answer. I'm sticking, seven. I'm it's sticking with good. seven. Yeah, that's yeah, I gave tens on the last couple. Um, yeah, exactly. And this is way better. So you wasted your tens <laughs> on beers that didn't deserve <laughs> who, the tens. Who thought? Who thought the roast was going to continue into the the post interview? <laughs> this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. Uh, so let's do drinkability. Ten. You're a slut. <laughs> no, I, I would actually say it's it's probably more like a. Oh, I don't know. It depends on the mood you're in. I would probably say more more like a six or seven, just because it does it. It's so very. Here's, so here's the thing. I'll give it a six on drinkability. But I want to say it'd be a really good beer mile beer. I mean, let's get into it. Because, like, when I think about beer mile beers, you're like, okay, what can I what can I burp up that's not gonna make me nauseous? that I can like pass the burps with relative ease. It's like not super fizzy. I think this kind of hits all the marks. That's actually what I was thinking. So the reason that we like Blue Moon for the beer mile is that it tastes good and it's not overly carbonated as compared to Budweiser. And then this- This literally tastes like orange cream soda. It's fucking me up right now. Yeah, but it's also like less fizzy than orange cream soda. Yes. Which is wild. Yeah. I honestly, and so just oh, almost spilled it for those listening. Uh, it is 5% alcohol legal, by volume. Legal. So it's legal. And that was part of why Colin sent it to us. So, I mean, we have I, to, I would a hundred percent do this for a beer mile and I guarantee you, I would not run slower than with Blue Moon. Oh for, yeah, for sure. Yeah. This is good. This is really good. Colin, do you know the folks at this brewery because if, much, if i could get this in a like a say a 24 pack so some to practice with some to race with even a 12 pack i could do it with a 12 pack uh, i'll bottles. happily i'll happily use this bottles right yeah so bottles okay. bottle. that's what that's what i mean could, could right. they could they take a keg of this and just put it into bottles and then send me some of those and i'll happily market the crap out of it for you how many how many grand? i mean i'll be going off my i'll be like breaking breaching my contract with blue moon but I, it's worth it's it for this contract yeah well no it's not alleged it's legit it just it's effective in 2023 
We're manifesting here, folks. Manifesting. Yeah, no, I, I'm I'm like dead serious though in saying God, that's fun. I would not run slower in a beer mile. The more I drink with it, this beer, so I would I would do it. The more I drink, I just feel so much more confused. Like it it tastes like orange cream soda and it's messing with my brain. It is so good. I I mean honestly, so I'm gonna say it. Best beer that I've ever had on the podcast. Not the most drinkable beer. Because it, it's like very sweet. I so can only I can only wise. have one or two, but I'm literally saying taste wise, it is unique enough and the flavor is so good. Like this is the tastiest beer that I've ever had. I'll give it the most unique beer. That's for sure. I mean, that's still that's still a good uh, praise for sure. Oh, definitely. that's still a great praise. I'm not going to drink a six pack of these, but this thing is damn good. You know, it's, uh, it's up there with the likes of the old Tank 7 with the old. I will, uh, I will say the... Uh, the listener beers have all been, oh, they've been really the best. good. Yeah, they've been the best. I was going to say the this f- is the, this is the lowest rated one that I had so far, and it's still like pretty phenomenal. Absolutely. Yeah. Thanks again to uh, Ryan, for, uh, Ryan from Wisconsin for the Fifth Ward Brewing Beers and now Colin. Listener beers hit different. Let's just be listener honest. Listener beers hit different. They <laughs> hit different, y'all. Um, Thank you so much again for sending these in. And we had great words of wisdom from Natasha and I guess kind of ourselves at the end of the interview. What do what do we end with today? Man, I want this in a beer bottle because I want to do this for the beer mile. But that's not words of wisdom. I'm What's just the- I'm just repeating that because like honestly, a month from now, the world record could be set in this beer if this brewery is willing to spend like 20 bucks to ship me some in a bottle. Like that's low, low cheap, cost of entry, pretty cheap investment, low cost of entry to get thousands of views on YouTube. That's all I'm saying. Uh, man, I don't know what, what I, I don't really have any other words of wisdom. I feel like Natasha like one upped us on the words of wisdom by far. Cause oh, she's, yeah. yeah, she, I mean, like she said, she's interested in writing and she's much more poetic and, uh, articulate than we are. So I think she already handled all the words of wisdom for us. Yeah. I've never been described as articulate. Um, yeah. What's the dirtiest thing you would do to get a six pack of these bad boys in bottles? The dirtiest thing. Hmm. Either like illegal or sexual. That's or, actually a fair question. Like yeah. what, how far would I go to get this in a six pack like, bottle? Say this is, so, so is, that's, so this that's, is like a world record setting beer. What would you do for it? Okay, so so assuming that this actually is better than Blue Moon, which it very well could be. Yeah. Like so, you're what you're saying is it like this is the difference in a world record or not? Yeah. Like this is a 432 beer mile versus Blue Moon's a 435 yeah. beer mile. What would I do? Ooh. Um, you know, <laughs> Jax uh, is looking at him all across the man. Couch. I would, I would. I mean, so I would absolutely. I mean, what what angle are we going for here? Oh, it could be illegal. I would, like, wh- I what? would absolutely put up, push the boundaries of your morality. I mean, I don't think this is immoral at all, but I would absolutely put up a naked pic of me on Instagram, but no, like you can't see the frontal genitalia. Like it's just me oh, from the just, side or my butt or something. Oh, uh, like, I like you know, that. Like okay. sport, like the Sports Illustrated, like athlete body covers. Yeah. I would absolutely do that. We will have to take those photos. Fo- let us know in the comments if you want a photo shoot. What's what's the specific like it's the the nude edition? What is it? Well, no. Well, there's a swimsuit edition, but that's not it. It's like it's literally they had like Emma Coburn on the front. They had a uh, one of the baseball players oh, on the dude. front. And they had a- all right for our video folks, even our listeners. You you couldn't see Chris's wife's response, but when he said Emma Coburn, she she does this thing with her head. <laughs> She where, she, where she does this and then she just kind of and then you know that you're like in trouble <laughs> um it's not the swimsuit edition it's like they're no naked. no no they literally had just like they what had it, they had the, the whatever the the big baseball player dude is i can't yeah. remember his name <laughs> i mean big baseball player like most baseball all, players all are them. very thick but uh two c's two c's Emma Coburn, I'm trying to think who else they but literally just like they highlight athlete athlete physiques. And so I'm saying I would I would do that. That's fine. Uh, That's let not- us know in the comments if you think that Chris and I should do that. Cause if enough people say it, then we should probably just do it. Whoa, whoa, whoa. why are you trying to get in on this with me? 
cool if the Harrier wants to sponsor it. Why are you trying to make this like a couples event? I was saying I would do this. Why are you trying I'm to just make trying it a couples event? Like what's his face said? I'm just trying to ride on your coattails. That's right. Or your or your meat stick. I don't know. <laughs> oh man, once again, thank you for the roast, y'all. Fire, 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 fire content. And now it's my turn. Send in your roast for Chris. Or if you have any other good ideas for Adam, send those in too. Oh, I like we could not have a podcast for weeks and I you just fart. <laughs> Did you just fucking fart? <laughs> <laughs> That's staying in. I've been holding Man. that for a while. It's so hard not to fart when you're interviewing people. Speak for yourself. Okay, let's close this thing out. Send us in those roasts. Five-star review on uh, Apple Podcasts, iTunes. I don't even know what it is now. Apple, Apple Pod- Podcasts. God, you iOS elitists. Uh, take a screenshot. Send that to us on Instagram. Uh, I'm a green text message type of guy. No, well, that's kind of funny because you use iOS and you use Signal. But hey, you know, everyone you know everyone that? deserves encrypted messaging regardless of what platform didn't you're Signal on. Come that's all I got to say. Jax is going to get mad at us because we're babbling. But didn't Signal uh, start like mining <laughs> cryptocurrency <laughs> on your phone? I hope so. They deserve it. It's a free service that's encrypted. Right. They deserve to mine cryptocurrency on my phone. <laughs> and with that, ladies and gentlemen, I think I've said that like five times. And with I said, that. And with that, ladies and gentlemen. No. Okay. All right, y'all. Why well, I say that a lot, too. <laughs> All right, yo. And with that, the, and that was, <laughs> we need a fucking sound. <laughs> okay, here we go. Here we go. <laughs> Actually, that would be funny. Tangents over for reals this time. Midwest goodbye, terminated, deleted. Just like these beers. Hashtag deleted. Thank you for tuning in. Hope you enjoyed this. Hope it hit different, just like these listener beers always hit different for us. We're excited to see you in the next episode, which will be right around the time that we're at the Drake Relays, the Kansas City Qualifier. We got some live episodes coming as a part of that so stay we know, tuned we know you like the in-person so do we yeah that's right slap the subscribe slap it oh, slap okay. the subscribe that's a little bit more playful yeah. usually it's like fucking destroy it you know? yeah yeah slap it up happy birthday because it's probably one of your birthdays out there as you're listening to this <laughs> what the fuck was that? i mean uh, if, if you have thousands of listeners odds are it's multiple of their birthdays when they're listening to this I mean, the math follows. The math follows. Can't argue with that. So happy birthday to to you, specifically you. Or your mom. Or your mom or your dad or your uncle or your aunt or your 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 mistress. Happy birthday. Enjoy your day. (laughs) You deserve it. Stay true. Drink a brew. Live, laugh, love. That's it. And there you have it. That was Natasha Rogers of the Brooks team. And she does professional running and she runs really hard and she has feelings. <laughs> and feelings. she has feelings. I mean, that's basically like the crux of the show, right? <laughs>